All right, let's uh, get into our, our Bible study tonight. And like I said, if you think of somebody else that we need to pray for, uh, let's not forget, we can, we can pray for them uh, at the end of the Bible study. And uh, let's... For the, past, for the past few weeks, we've been talking about yes. who we are in Christ. If you look to the bottom of your right, yes. uh, if you open your uh, your lesson, if you look to the bottom right, it's like who you are in Christ series. So for the past few weeks, the first one is our identification with Jesus. Yes. Number two is going in maturity. Three is Christ in you, us in him. Uh -huh. And today we're going to be entering into who uh, you are an overcomer. Amen. And through him, you're an overcomer. That's right. So just open yourselves up. If you have something to share, please share it. Uh, yes. Don't exclude yourself, include yourself. That's Amen. right. So you, you, know, you know we're being taped, so that's okay. Don't don't clam up on us now, you know, uh, uh -huh. because, uh, you know, this is Bible study, you know, so we're not the only ones studying. Everybody is doing a little of their own study. Amen. So it says, uh, who we are in Christ you are an overcomer. It says in this lesson, you will learn that if you are a born-again believer, you are an overcomer. It says victory is a gift of God. We don't have to work for it. Aren't you glad for that? Amen. Amen? It says we just receive it by faith. It says we can have victory over the devil, Amen. the Amen. flesh, Amen. temptation, sin, and the world. Amen. Amen. Amen? It's not that we just leave the world and never go to it. Amen? I mean, you know, let's be for real. We gotta go to work. Okay, we gotta go shopping, people. We gotta go walking. You know, some of us exercise. So we're gonna be, we're in the world, but we're not of the world. Okay? You know, in, in Ephesians, it tells us, in chapter 6, it tells us to put on the armor of God. Yes. That's it. And this is what we need to do because we fight this uh, spiritual battle. Yes, we do. So we need to keep this armor on at all times and soldiers of God. You know, That's we need it. to keep our spiritual uh, armor on. All the time. Amen. Amen. So be Amen. ready. Be ready. All right. We're going to be uh, going through the overcoming uh, part here. Overcomers through Jesus Christ. We're overcomers, okay? Not the dogs, not the cats, but us <laughs> people. We, the saints, Children. okay? Children of God are overcomers through Jesus Christ. Vicki, you can start with 1 Corinthians 15, 57. Ryan, you've got 2 Corinthians on down the line. Uh, Aurora, you've got uh, 1 John 5. And Bernard, you've got 1 John 4.4. 4. And we're going to go on down the line until we make it around again. And, you know, we got a lot of scripture to cover tonight. But let's read these and realize, you know, that God has given us his word so that we can be overcomers. Amen? And uh, he wants us to overcome everything. Like it says, the devil, mm -hmm. our flesh, temptation, sin, and the world. Amen. Okay? And so we can live in this world and, and, and still be children of God. Amen? Because, you know, he gave us this world. Okay? So, you know, you, you know you're not going to just set it aside and say, well, I don't need you, world. Well, you might as well just die going on to heaven right now. Okay? Because we're going to, we need this world. We got to go to work. Some of us, you know, most of us are employed. You know, we're still working. You know? And uh, we need groceries. We got to go to the grocery store. So we got to go to the world again. You don't go to the church to buy groceries. I'm sorry. You go to the grocery store. Okay, so let's remember that. Okay, Vicki, are you ready with 1 Corinthians 15, 57? Okay, it says, But thanks be to God, which gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. God gives us victory through Jesus, okay? That's how we can be overcomers, okay? And you don't think, you don't think you're an overcomer, but you are. You're an overcomer in Christ. Yes, amen. Okay, remember those little books I told you about? I'm going to still We're get them, them ready. Get them together. <laughs> the little in him books by Brother Hagen, and, and it's really good. You know, I mean, it's one of the, it's an old one, and and uh, boy, I tell you, it's it's just chock full of scripture. Okay, of who you are in Christ. Amen. And this is what we've been talking about the in Christ series. You're in Christ. You're not in yourself. You're in Christ. So you're able to do things that normal people can't do because you're in Him. Amen. Remember right. that we're overcomers. Um, we got to get the word in us. Yes. And the word works if you <coughs> release it. Yes. If you work it. So we have to do these things, but we have, we have to know the truth. It's the truth that sets us free. So it's not just going to jump on you. You have to do your part. Amen. Yes. Our our, uh, our uh, scripture 
Bible verse here, uh, all this uh, series has been to study to show ourselves some fruit. Mm -hmm. So we need to do our part. Yes, we do. Amen. Praise God. Let's go on to uh, B, right? And that's 2 Corinthians. Turn there if you don't have it. 2.14. But thanks be to God who always leads us in triumph in Christ and manifests to us the sweet aroma <laughs> of the knowledge of Him in every place. In every place. So we triumph in Christ Jesus. Amen. But Wait, the, how many times? All the time. All the time. All the time. All the time. Sometimes. No. Every time. time. Every time. Every time. Every time. Oh. We gotta remember that. That's remember, right. We fight a spiritual battle. We fight a defeated foe. So we can have to remind him and yes. let him know because he's so dumb and forgets. No, no, <laughs> no, no. And, and look, look at both of these scriptures. They both start out with "but thanks be," yes. okay? Or you know, on this one, and in, in, in the other one, it says, "Now thanks be unto God." Mm -hmm. So thankfulness. It's big in God's vocabulary. Yes, yes, yes. And it should be big in our vocabulary. Even if you don't have nothing else to say, thank you, Lord. I, I, you know, I thank you for my family. I thank you for my neighbor. You may not even like your neighbor. But I tell you what, you better learn how to love somebody because we're supposed to love them all. Yes. Even our enemies. Even if they're your enemy, you're to love them. Well, we Read the Sermon on the Mount. Oh, my gosh. Bernard, that's one of those gut you things, you know, that it's just like, ugh. You know, when you stick a knife into something, it's just like, I don't I didn't want to read that. I don't wanna <laughs> I don't even like my neighbor. <laughs> but you know, read that. When you when you're done reading that, you you'll start loving everybody and everything. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right, let's go on to C. Uh first John five, one through five. Everyone who believes that Jesus is is the Christ is born of God. Uh. And everyone who loves the Father loves his child as well. Mm -hmm. This is how we know that we love the children of God, by loving God and carrying out his commands. In fact, this is love for God, to keep his commands, and his commands are not burdensome. For everyone born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that has overcome the world, even our this is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. Who is that overcomes the world? Only the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. Ooh, yes. Amen. So whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. And you know what? You have to believe that. Amen. It says whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. Amen. Amen. And everyone that loveth him that begat, <clears throat> loveth him also that is begotten of him. My goodness. I mean look look at this scripture. How much it talks about the love of God. I think every one of the 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 verses have something about love in it. You know, for this is the love of God that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not grievous. You know, his commandments are not Hard. Amen. They really are. Not suggestions either. That's suggestions. right. Command is a command. That's it. Amen. So yes. that means we must do. Uh, one thing I, I forgot a few minutes ago, I lost my thought was God's God is love. His love for them. Have love and compassion for them. Yes. You know, feeling sorry for them is not going to help anyone. That's right. That's right. So I have a part to, to play. I'm an imitator of Christ. I am Christ-like, so I can lift them up and pray for them, okay? So that's love and compassion. That's what we are. Yes. You know, it's kind of hard not to read, uh, or to read, I should say, the Sermon on the Mount, and, and remember the love of God and us being overcomers. Because, boy, I tell you, you you'll be something when you're done with well, you're going to either be mad or you're going to be a happy puppy. One of the two. Amen. Okay, when you're done reading the Sermon on the Mount. Right. Because you know what? Uh, Jesus suggested some things there. It's just like, oh, man, you know, we pass that on to somebody else. I, you know, I just want to tear that chapter out. Five, six, seven. Just tear those out. But yeah. you can't do that, okay? Jesus taught it in context. And we <laughs> have to realize that we're overcomers. We can do what he said in the Bible. Yeah. Or he wouldn't have taught it to us. Or he would have told okay? us we can do all things you know, through we Christ. We can do all things who strengthens us. Who strengthens. Yeah. And you know, we have to be strengthened with his might, with his love, in order to do some of the things that he suggests to do in Matthew chapter 5, 6, and 7. Because, honey, it is not for the faint of heart. I can tell you that. 
God, like I told you before, Christianity is not for wimps. If you're going to be a wimp, you got to go. Because you got to be strong in the Lord and the power of His might. Okay, we're not strong in ourselves, we're strong in Him. Amen? And so we have to continue to be strong in Him to the end. This is a race, people. You know, the Olympics just finished. Excuse me. It's not a sprint, it's a marathon. Yes. So we got to do this for That's life, it. as long as God has it. That's right. That's it. Amen. You know, when a runner starts out, they don't start midway and say, oh, wait. <laughs> Uh, uh, uh. You know, I gotta go tell my mom something. No, you start with that race, and you know, all the way to the end. And that's how it is with our Christian walk. Amen. Okay, you don't just go to church once in a while, and in ten years, I might go back. Oh, I might go for Easter. Uh, uh, honey, it's it's a race. You keep going, whether you like it or you don't like it. You know, you have to go. You have to learn. Jesus says for us to study to show ourselves approved. A workman that need not be ashamed. Amen. Rightly right. dividing the Amen. word of truth. It's like you can rightly divide it, you can also wrongly divide it. You know, uh, okay? the father and the son met in heaven. Uh-huh. And the father told what the son what he needed from him. That's right. And wanted him to do. And the, the son gave his word to his father. I'll do, Father, what, I'll do what, it. what, you, what you're telling me. I'll do Amen. it. He gave his word. It's how important so important that he <clears throat> our yes. word also, you know, and he came and he succeeded he succeeded on his mission. That's it. And he had some obstacles. Yes, he did. And he was in the flesh, but he spent time with the Father yes. to strengthen himself, which is what we need to do also. We're not by ourselves. We go to him for yes. strength. We yes, go to we him do. when we need him, you know, yeah. and uh, um, this is what Jesus did. He completed his mission. We can do the same thing. Amen. Amen. So Amen. we got we got we have to remember these things. But well, like I was saying a few minutes ago, is His love and His compassion. Right. You know, when the lepers came to, to Jesus, the lepers are restricted away out of town. They're not even supposed to come close to people, but they beg Jesus and they come to Jesus, and Jesus says, "Go and show yourself to the priest." Yes, and they went, but one of them came back. They went on their way. They were healed. I don't know if maybe some of them were missing uh, fingers because you lose fingers, you lose limbs or whatever. Maybe uh, they grew around. Mm -hmm. And he saw himself complete, right. whole. Amen. And then he went back with an attitude of gratitude yes. to say thank you. Uh -huh. And he says, there was ten of you, only one come back. Where's the other nine? Yeah. He says, you know, this is what we need to remember. He appreciates when we go and fulfill what he's called us to do. Yes. Amen. So. Not just when we need him. That's, that's right. right. That's, that's right. right. Not, Amen. You know, that's good. All the time. Yes. Amen. Amen. That's Sadly good. to say, that's what. That's the only time you see some people. They have gone yes, through a trial. And boy, I tell you, they need prayer. And they're in church. And the minute that that is over with, they seem like, you know, well, I'm okay. And I'm, they're gone. He needs God too. Yeah. And, and you don't see them again. And I can name quite a few like that. But you know, we're not well, here to point fingers at anybody. Amen. We're going to pray for them and lift them up and pray that they'll get back into the fold. Amen? Because they're out there. They're on their own basically. Yeah. You know, and then when they get in another mishap, they'll be back. I want the group to pray for them, you know? And it's, it's just not a, a hit and miss thing. It, we have to stick with it. Amen? So, praise God. Yeah, I'm glad God is not like, like, I, like, us. like I am. Because oh, oh. if I, yeah. I got kids and I got people if I, yeah. I got kids something. I just want to say I love you and I don't know. I need twenty dollars, I need this, I need that, I need a new car, you know, whatever yeah. their situation is, they never call unless they need something. They need something. You know, and if we only go to God for the same thing, uh -huh. what is that saying about us? Uh -huh. That's it. That's good. That's good. You, know, you can't stay and overcome it that way, amen. Right. You can't. You have to stick with the word got to stay with God. Okay, let's look at Dean. Greater is he. Yes, he yes. who? Jesus that is in you. 1 John 4, 4. Let's okay. read that. Right. <laughs> you are of God, little children, and have overcome them because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. Now, Amen. Let, let me read the end of the verse 6 because yeah, it gives some clarification. Okay. By this, you know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Ah. So you, you put the yes. 
And then uh, the question I ask you on the verse 4, we said, you have overcome them. Yes. Then yeah, yeah. what? The devil and demons. Yeah, you have to read it if, uh, yes. a bit, I guess, on the verse mm -hmm. 1, to 3. And uh, mm -hmm. the spirit of the Antichrist, That's the, right. the false prophet, yes. the bad spirit. That's, That's what the meaning of That's that. Them. Mm -hmm. Let's uh, read uh, verse uh, 7 and 8. Mine starts off with the source of love. Oh, it says, Beloved, let us love one another. For yeah. the love is of God, and everyone that love, loveth is born of God, and knoweth God. He that loveth not, knoweth not God. For God is love. love. Amen. This is what we need to remember. You can't be an overcomer if you don't love God. Okay? Because God is the source of our overcoming. Amen. He's the one that's helping us. That's why we have to love Him. Amen? Above all, we have to love Him. And we have to love people. Like I said, you may not like your neighbor, you may not like nobody, not even your own self. You know, and it's time to wake up. Yes. Because he said, let us love one another. He tells us that we have one enemy only. Yes. And his name is Satan. It's Satan. It's not people. That's right. You know, so. You know, take the form of a different thing, you know. They take the form of your neighbor, they take the form of your kids or your spouse or whatever, but it's still Satan working through them. Oh, yes. yes. Vicky was saying, that's verse 11. She says, uh, Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. Amen. Just Amen. think about that. And you know, there's a lot of people out there, unlovely people. You don't even want them in your house, let alone on your porch, okay? But you know, we got still got to love them. You know, you love them because you feel, you do feel for them because you know they need God in their lives, okay? You know, and you can, you can pray for them. You know, to for somebody to go across their path. You may not be that somebody. Maybe the next your other neighbor or somebody down the street might be that somebody. But pray that some laborer would cross their path. And who knows? The Lord may may let you cross their mm -hmm. path. Maybe now isn't the time to talk to them. Maybe it'll be weeks and months down the road. But still pray for them. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Okay, right here we're gonna take a minute and we're gonna. We're going to go to the discussion questions right here. And we're going to look at number one. It says, share how Jesus has caused you to triumph. Because all of us have triumphed here. Okay? All of us have overcome something. Whether it's our relatives, uh, the boss on the job, or, you know, just something in our lives. We've all triumphed yeah, over something. A habit, possibly? You know? Addictions. Addictions? You know? So who, who wants to, to share for a little bit? on how Jesus has caused you to triumph. Because, you know, we're here because of Jesus. We're not here because we look so good and smell so good, all right? We're not here because of that. We're here because we have, or we are overcomers, amen, in Christ Jesus. Who wants to share? Well, just encouraging ourselves in the Lord when we're down and, and like there's, uh, we feel like there's no hope or mm -hmm. uh, to, to just encourage ourselves in God. Yes. I mean, my grandchildren was singing a song when I was down one day and telling me, the Lord used these kids to tell me Amen. to encourage yourself in the Lord. And I'm like, encourage yourself. And four of them at the time. And each one of them started singing. And I'm like, I see, I see what I have to do. And just being able to encourage myself in the Lord when I'm down and I feel like there's no hope, God is my hope. He is yes, my strength. Yes, that's right. And once I can do that, then I'm like, okay, Lord, I got this is a daily thing for me. Um, you know, because you're on that mountaintop, mm -hmm. but sometimes that mountaintop, you know, you can kind of. You will fall oh, off that mountain. And, and, yeah, you're down in the valley. So what do you do? You know, yeah. Yeah. encourage yourself. Yes. <laughs> Praise God. Yeah. You know, kids have a way of helping us. Okay. You, we think that they're the helpless ones, and they need help all the time. Yes. But you know that you know they can just really jerk the slack out of them. And, and you know, don't it. think we're they too did. old to, to to receive from them because we're not. Yeah. Because they and you know they, they come with a pure heart. Yes. They're not like somebody else. That's so innocent. Yes, yes, innocent little beings, you know. And they tell you stuff like this, and you say, you know, 
know, I should have known this. Instead of, don't say, I, that's well, that's you know, I, y'all just get out of here. You know, I don't no. want to hear that. No, because you know what? That's a word from the Lord. Yes. You know, yes. So we need to receive it. Amen. You know, when Kelsey else? tells us, uh, we're out on our daily walk, our daily mission. Uh -huh. But then he says, do not forsake the assembly of ourselves together. That's right. We come together on Sundays. We gather ourselves to do what? To, to encourage, encourage one another. Mm -hmm. Hey, it's good to see you again. Mm -hmm. I'm glad you made it. And listen, we're at all different walks. We're yeah. all at different levels of of uh, maturity. Yes. Of being born again. Yes. The little ones Linda's talking about are more mature than some of these <laughs> adults. And so age-wise... <laughs> It's different. Yeah. Spiritual, uh, spiritually, it is is different than our physical age, where as uh, in the spirit, the little ones might be more mature yeah. than the adults. But we're here to encourage one, encourage another. one another. We come together. We go out, but we come together to encourage one another. And yes. we can't forget this. And the longer you're away from the assembly, uh, he says, don't forsake this. Because, you know, we're supposed to do this. And some people are doing this as the days get closer for his return. Mm -hmm. And some people do this. And uh, you get desensitized and, and you get into the world and all of a sudden you're back and doing, you know, what you shouldn't be doing. Yeah. So, but we're supposed to encourage one to know, you know, I, I, I enjoy coming back. I enjoy being with you. I enjoy encouraging you. And, and, I, and I receive your encouragements, you know. So this is something that we, we must do. And, you know, we, we need to show it and we need to uh, receive it uh, because uh, mm -hmm. it, it, it's, it's a blessing. Yes, it is. You know, it blesses me just to be with you and uh, for you to encourage me. And I want to do the same for you, you know. So praise God. It's good to, to see people grow in the things of mature, God. Mature, yeah. You know, mature in the things of God. And they're not just babies all the time, you know. And, and you know, sometimes, you know, some of y'all will come to us, you know, with words of encouragement. It's just like, wow, they're growing. You know, they're growing in the things yeah. of God. You're Praise God. Yes, yeah. somebody's paying attention out there, which is good, you know. Because, you know, we don't know it all. And we don't, we don't, we don't. Try, hopefully we don't act like we know it all because honey, I don't know all this book. That's why I'm still in it like you guys, okay? And that's why it's called Bible study and it's not just when we're at church. We have to do it on our own. You know, like I said, we spend a lot of time in the bathroom and sometimes we're sitting and so we ought to have lots of material around us that we can sit and study okay? Because you know what? Uh, hey, Let's, let's just face it. We have a body. And when it says, I need to go, you better go. All right? And sit there. You know, just be encouraged in the Lord. You know, I've heard too many people, you know, say, when he got saved at? One was on the toilet. I'm thinking, oh, Jesus. You know, and you think, oh, don't they have anything else to talk? Because we have, you know, we spend a lot of time in there. So have scriptures. You know, pin them on the mirror. You know, have some extra things. Pastor hands out these uh, handouts all the time with scriptures on them. Put them in there where you can grab one and while you're sitting there and musing, doing nothing, instead of trying to count the bugs, count the ways oh, yeah. you can love God more. Yeah, instead, yeah. instead, of, instead of bringing Praise your God. sales paper, yeah. <laughs> bring your scripture binder. You know you're not going to go buy none of that stuff anyway. <laughs> but I tell you, this is gonna what's going to change your life. The word of God, yes. people. Yeah. That's yeah. going to change your life. Pastor Pat is being very down to earth. <laughs> <laughs> We live, you know. I, you know, I know. I live just like you guys. Live. You know, I call her queen all the time, so she's talking about the throne. All the time. <laughs> we all have one, so praise God. All right, let's go on, and we're going to go talk yes. about a little bit about overcomers by God's love. And uh, Aurora, let's see, you've already read, so it's Bert's turn now. Bert. Romans 8, 31 to 37, and then uh, Joe, you've got uh, uh, 1 Corinthians 13, 8, Carmen, you've got Romans 5, 5, and uh, see, Paul, you've got 1 John 2, 5 to 10. In your new okay. album. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> said, oh, oh, God, I praise God. I carry this on here. So we're overcomers by God's love. Let's look at Romans 8. 
What then shall we say to these things? Ah. If God is for us, who can be against us? That's right. Woo. Amen. I love that. And then uh, verse 37. Yet in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loves us. Amen. Amen. You know, it's not that we're deliberately skipping over some of these scriptures, okay? We are in a way, you know, for time's sake and all that. You can read some of these when you go home. You know, you can read some of these between these verses here, okay? Amen. Uh, because next, yes, okay? Yes. Amen. And so let's remember that we are more than conquerors because of God's love. Not our love. He first loved us, okay? And so, you know, uh, we just have to remember that we overcome by his love. And it's, it's, it's his love that we walk in when we have to love the unlovely people out there. Okay? Think yes. about that. Because we're going to run into them as long as you're on this earth, please. You're going to run into people and you're going to have to talk to people <coughs> sometime, sooner or later. Some of them may be caring for you. Some of them may be waiting on you. But, you know, you're going to have to talk to people. That's all there is to it, you know, the long and short of it. You can't disregard people. Okay? They're here. And let's see, let the love of God show forth in you. Okay? You know, you walk up to a man, you might want to slap him, but let the love of God. Hello, his love how are you? Excuse me. Whatever. Let his love and compassion yes, show you. forth in your life. Amen. We have to. That's the only way we're going to be, continue to be overcome. Right. You know, everybody that walked up to Jesus was not real nice. Uh -uh. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And they said things about him. But he knew when to hold his word. Yes. We need to know that ourselves. Yes. You know, if, if you if somebody's dealing with you in the flesh and you answer back in the flesh, it's not gonna be a good thing. Uh -uh. So you have to you have to know uh to hold yourself. Yes. And be in control. It's the uh, hardest thing to tame is the tongue. Yeah. And sometimes we don't give ourselves time to hold right. ourselves, you know. We just let it go. Mm -hmm. It's a small part of us, but it controls us. Yes, it <laughs> does. It can it control does. us, so we've got to be careful. Okay, let's look at uh, B, God's love never fails. Who's got 1 Corinthians 13 a. Let's read. Remember we sang that song tonight, <laughs> Faith, Hope, and Charity? Okay. Charity meaning love, amen? So love never fails. Okay, whoever has got that one. Charity never fails, but whether there be prophecy, they judge God well. Whether there be done, they judge thee. Whether there be knowledge, he shall run away. That's right. But as y'all know, love will never fail. Uh, uh, amen? Ryan, read it from the uh, Amplified. Yes. yes. Love never fails, never fades out, or becomes obsolete, or comes to an end. After the promise is again, charity means it will be fulfilled and pass away, and it will lose its value and be superseded by truth. Amen. Praise God. So love is unfailing, okay? Love can never fail. All right? Praise God. Let's go on to uh, Romans chapter 5, verse uh, 5. You know, uh, John 3 16 tells us, love never fails, says, for God so loved the world that he sacrificed, yes. he gave his only begotten son. Yes, he did. Amen. And Jesus shows his love by going to the cross and fulfilling what he told the Father that he would do. Yes. Amen. And right before he gave up himself to the Father, back to the Father, he said, mm -hmm. he said, uh, forgive them. Our church motto is this, and our yes. our motto ourselves should be love, accept, and forgive. Love again. Amen. So if he could do it, so can we. Yes. He says we can do all things That's right. through Christ. Road covers, remember? By God's love. Okay, Romans 5 5. Now hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. Amen. Praise God. So, God's love shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. Amen. God's love has been shed abroad in our hearts. Just think about that. It's not the love of your neighbor. It's not your mama's love. Not your daddy's love. Not grandma's love. 
It's his because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. So you might say, well, I don't have no love for nobody. You're just, you just lie. Because it's right here, it says, it's been shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. The Amplified so, says, such love never disappoints or deludes or shames us. Yes. For God loves us. For God's love has been poured out in our hearts yes, it has. through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. Yes. Amen. So the Holy Spirit has a part in this too. Amen. It's been given unto yes, us. Amen. Oh, praise God. Let's go on to D. Love the brother. No occasion for stumbling. So let's turn to 1 John 2, 5, and 10. 1 John. 1 John 2. Oh, Paul's rich. See, he, he's all, he's got oh, man, he's got, got, he's got oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> Two, five, and ten. Go on. Okay. But whoever keeps his word, truly the love of God is perfected in him. Amen. By this we know that we are in him. Amen. And he who says he abides in him ought himself also to walk just as he walked. Brethren, I write no new commandment to you, but an no, old commandment right. which you have had from the beginning. The old commandment is the word which you heard from the beginning. Uh -huh. Again, a new commandment I write to you, which thing, which thing is true in him and in you, because the darkness is passing away and the true light is already shining. <laughs> he who says he is in the light and hates his brother is oh, in darkness oh, until now. Oh, boy. He who loves his brother abides in the light, and there is no cause for stumbling in him. Praise Amen. God. Thank you, Paul. It was just 5 and 10, but I'm glad he read oh, oh. them all. No, no, that's why I say you got to read the in-between, too, yeah. okay? Because, you know, it gives a greater meaning when you read it all, okay? So, like I said, we, we're not reading the whole chapter or anything like that, just certain scriptures. But y'all get the drift here. Go back and read the Sermon on the Mount, okay? And it's one. Of, this is one of those scriptures right here that where you can take the knife and turn it again, okay? All right? Because, oh, my gosh. Oh, you got to go loving your brother. Oh, my goodness. But mm -hmm. well, not, you know, that's great. And But that scripture that you had quoted on Sunday that we had talked about. Oh, yeah. Uh, but the time has come that judgment must begin uh -huh. in the house of that's God. That's right. And it first be, and it and if it first began at us, at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the right. gospel of God? That's it. And if the righteous scarce would be saved, where shall the ungodly and, and the, the sinner, sinner be? Here? Yes. And I've heard that, I've read it. But you know, it really pricked my heart. <laughs> mm. Like wow. What she's talking about is First Peter chapter four. Turn to it, everybody. Turn to it. First Peter chapter four. Let's go over because you know, you know, sometimes we, we hear scripture and it's like, wow, where is that at? You know, and and I know I've heard that before, and it's just like when Revelation comes. See, this is what happens when Revelation of the Word comes. Amen. Because it will wake you up, it will shake you up, and shake you in your boots. Amen. Do you think the Sermon on the Mount is going to? Be shaking you, but some this certain scripture, this one right here. Okay, chapter 4, verse 17 and verse 18. It says, For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it first begin with at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? And if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? It's like wow. Yeah, I mean, we got to do this, people. We have to do this. Word. When you read the, the, the Sermon on the Mount, you're going to feel, wow, where have I been all my life? Because I surely haven't been doing any of this stuff. You know, where, I mean, where, where's this at? You know, that Jesus is talking about, got to do this and got to do that, you know? Oh, my God. It, it, it'll shake you up. It really will. And the Word should shake you up, you know, and, 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 and get you to believe the right way. Yes. Amen. The truth of God's word. And so if we, us righteous ones, are scarcely going to be saved, where will the ungodly come in at? You know? That's why we got to, we, you know, you're either going to be for God or against God. Yes. That's all there is to it. Since if God be for us, who can be against us? No one. Because God is for us. 
That's why we can be overcomers in God's word. Amen? With his word. We're, we can't be an overcomer without his word. I'm sorry. You know, those people that say they know God and, and do some of this kind of stuff here or don't do this stuff, you know, it's like, wow, wake up, people. Read the sermon on now. Okay. That's it. It really is. And we can't get it. It's just like, I don't want to do none of this stuff, Lord. But I know I have to because yeah. you said so. Okay? Oh, my gosh. I mean, whosoever, he says, he tells us to let our light so shine before men. And how in the world is our light going to shine before men if we don't love them? If we don't love the people that he created? You know, Isn't that something? How can we say we love God yeah. when we've never seen when you, him? Yeah. And, and paraphrasing it and hate our brothers. Yeah. You know, who was right in our face. Every day. You know, every day. It's impossible. It's impossible. Like and, I said, uh, go and read chapter 5, 6, and 7. Oh, boy. I tell you, I didn't want to start reading it at all because I knew it was all in red. I'm thinking, oh, slap me again, Lord. Slap uh, me again, Lord. Uh, you know, <laughs> really. <laughs> Because it, it, it will, it'll clean you up, it'll straighten your theology up in a hurry if you want it straightened up. If you want it straightened Okay? Yeah. If you want it straightened up. So praise God. All right. Uh, one more scrap of scripture, and we're going we're gonna to close tonight. Uh, love of brother. No occasion for stumbling. First John. Did we get that? Oh, we got that. We got that. Okay, let's go over to our discussion questions before we close. Number two. It says, share how God's love in your life has made you an overcomer. Amen? Because, you know, we, we still have a lot of work to do. God has a lot of work to do in, in, in us. So who wants to be first? Come on, one or two of us. Let's just share how the love of God has made you an overcomer. Brian, I know you got something to share. Well, I'm just trying to think how to say it. <laughs> just say you know, it. before I met Jesus, I was at the last way I wanted to. Mm -hmm. Most of and it work. wasn't taking me where I wanted to go. I mean, I thought it was, but then I, where I wound up in jail, it wasn't uh -huh. where I had planned my life to go. Wow. You know, at the same time I was in jail, I go, well, apparently this is not the way I had my life planned. So uh -huh. I asked Jesus to forgive me, to clean me up, to, you know, take all the junk out of my life, all the trash and everything. And, you know, from that moment on, all the desires for that, for the drugs, alcohol, and all this, through this stuff, it went away. Yeah. You know, I didn't have the, the cravings, the withdrawals, and, you know, the sickness and stuff. You know, and God replaced that hunger, and desire for stuff, for the hunger and thirst for Him. That's Amen. good. That's yeah, good. good. You know, Praise God. God takes what <laughs> Satan has made bad or evil or uh -huh. dirty and turns it around so now I'm able to talk to other people who are going through the same thing, you know. Yeah. I mean, I know exactly where they're coming from, but I know that's mm -hmm. good. You know, that's yeah. good. Yeah. Yeah. Overcome. And we can, we can all be overcomers. Amen. God wants us to overcome. Okay, by the blood of the Lamb and the word of His you know, testimony. Uh, we can not overcome. The good thing is um, when you share your testimony and you do it by God way, God do, God do, God's way. Uh huh. It'll release somebody else from bondage. Yes, it because will. the Bible tells us in Revelation they all came by the blood of the Lamb and the, the word of testimony. testimony. And when people see uh -huh. where you've been yeah. and where God has brought you to, they feel, wow, there's hope for me. Mm -hmm. You know, and God can take them and release them from that bondage and bring them out. Amen. And start using them now, you know. And Amen. they are somebody. Everybody is somebody. We just need to know the truth and you know, what the Word of God says. That's it. And yeah. uh, we're to do yes. something. We're, we have a calling, yes. and we're equipped to do God's work. We just yeah. need to know the truth. That's Amen. it. Mm -hmm. Let's close with our memory verse. Linda, want you read that first John four four? It's right in the lesson here. We've had already read it tonight. You let's are read it of here. God, little children, uh -huh. and have overcome them. Because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. Amen. You are God, little children. You know, God doesn't say, uh, call you a you ugly scoundrel. He says, little children. We're still little children to him. Yes. Amen. And so we've overcome them, he says. You know, it's amazing that God put all this sin 
on Jesus and sacrificed his son. So when he sees you, he sees Jesus. Amen. So we just owe him everything. As a matter of fact, he says he's purchased, he's bought us. Yes. We belong to him. The price. We just need to know this. It's paid in full. It's paid in full. full. So that we know this, so that we can start turning around and start living for him and Amen. doing for him. Yes. Amen. So you are special. Why? Because you were purchased with the blood of Jesus. And you are somebody special. Yes. And uh, when you start seeing yourself that way, seeing yourself the way he sees you, 